What's up guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to be looking at the subreddit Tressless to look at a particular post from a user known as Lolliquary. So first we're going to look at their improvement pictures, but then we're going to look at their hair loss stack or the set of medications and treatments that they did to reverse their hair loss. But before we continue, YouTube tells me that only 30% of my viewers are subscribed. So if you want to see more of this content or other hair loss adjacent content, be sure to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, consider becoming a channel member for only $2 a month. All links in the description below. Enough shilling, let's get on with this video. So the title of this post is, quote, 18 male progression part three, six months, unquote. So I'm going to assume that there were parts before this post and possibly subsequently after this post, but this was originally posted May 1st, 2023. Right now it's April 12th, 2024. Anyways, the poster is very young with a profound amount of hair loss. In fact, it looks like he's a grade five or six on the Nord Hamilton scale with some distinct diffuse thinning. However, they post a before and after, which supposedly they took these photos six months apart. And guys, I have to say that these results are crazy because it looks like this guy had a hair transplant and just considering the time frame, I don't think that was possible. But this dude was able to jump several Norwood scales to obtain full coverage on his scalp in areas that were previously miniaturized, if not bald. Now, granted, the user does appear to have some curlier hair quality to his hair texture, and curlier and kinkier hair types provide more coverage to the scalp because they occupy more surface area per hair follicle. This idea generally holds true when it comes to hair transplants, as oftentimes more curlier and kinkier hair types need less grafts to obtain optimal coverage compared to the straight hair counterparts. But let's not take away from the improvement that was made here. This was a very impressive improvement. Even taking into account his curly hair coverage, it should still be noted that a substantial amount of the hair had to be regained in order to achieve this kind of coverage with this density. So this was a substantial improvement in the poster's hair. But I have some issues here with this user because the hair loss treatment stack that they use is pretty, to me, unsafe and ridiculous. So before I even mention what this user did, let me start off by saying this. Do not try this yourself. If you do this, you're taking full responsibility. If you even do any sort of treatment, go to your doctor, get a doctor's supervision. Don't do this on yourself. I'm only reporting on what this user did and the results that they obtained. This user is doing some pretty crazy stuff that could actually have permanent side effects and could harm your cardiovascular system. So again, don't do what he's doing. But now that I have covered my ass, let's see what he did. <laughs> this Reddit user started with 100 milligrams of RU58841, Jesus Christ, using a mixture of 600 milligrams RU, 12 milliliter alcohol at 95% concentration, and five milliliter of glycol, I'm assuming propylene glycol, and they applied three milliliters of this solution that they made themselves every day. Let me say this, and I see this on like platforms like TikTok all the time and other social media platforms. RU5 aided for one is an experimental research chemical. It has not been FDA approved for any condition, including androgenetic alopecia. We have some insights and studies that suggest that it was potentially used in humans at one point, but that human clinical trial data has never been publicly released. We do have the non-human primate data on RU5841. This is also called NHP data. And it's typically used in clinical trials to see what would happen in a animal that's closely related to humans. So this particular animal where they tested RU5841 on is the stump-tailed rhesus macaca monkeys. And these monkeys experience androgenetic alopecia. So it's a nice one-to-one -one comparison. But we have data on that, and it seems like it was healthy and safe for them, but we don't have any long-term or safety quality data. Again, we don't have that data to conclusively say RU5841 is safe. People have reported having cardiovascular issues while using topical RU5841, and because we don't have that safety data, we can't really discount or call all of those concerns nocebo, especially when you consider the class of medications where RU5841 comes from, especially the batch in which it came from from other drugs like flutamide or bicalutamide, they all seem to have some sort of cardiovascular toxicity to them, particularly to the lungs. 
But enough talking about RE5841's potential symptoms. In theory, it works by blocking the androgen receptor so that DHT cannot bind to the hair follicles androgen receptor and just destroy it, right? So it's like a shield for the hair follicle. So this is a use at your own risk kind of thing. So I would say that people should be more cautious and wise if they even do consider this route. But I'm not saying do this. Again, stick to the FDA treatments if you do not know what you're doing. The user also goes on to mention that they initially used topical minoxidil, but then they began to ingest, like they began to drink the topical minoxidil about 7.5 milligrams daily, which they equate to three drops in the morning and six drops in the evening. Now, this is probably where the bulk of their hair gains came from, if I'm going to be honest, right? Because we know when you take minoxidil orally, it has positive effects on the antigen phase of the hair growth cycle, even more so than topical minoxidil. And this mostly has to do with the sulfurotransferase enzyme that not many people have enough adequately on their scalp. So because of that, they result to using it orally because when it goes to the liver, there's enough of that particular enzyme, that sulfurotransferase enzyme or SALT1A1, as it's also known by, which turns minoxidil into minoxidil sulfate, which is the active ingredient that actually causes hair follicles to stay in antigen or stay in that prolonged growth phase. However, oral minoxidil alone has a lot of concerning issues. Even at its supposed low doses, where it has never adequately been shown if its serious side effects like pericardial fusion, which by the way is essentially when fluid builds around the heart and constricts its pumping mechanism, right? It hasn't been established that those serious side effects are related to the dose itself or if it's just something unique to the patient's characteristics like their genetics and how they just individually react to the drug. If it is independent, that means in theory you can get pericardial fusion on something like 0.5 milligrams of minoxidil up to 5 milligrams or even a high dose, right? But to me it seems more likely for this thing to occur at the higher doses but again, if you cannot adequately say that through studies and empirical evidence, we can't even go there. But outside of me just talking about low-dose oral minoxidil, let's not make a mistake here. This guy is literally drinking topical minoxidil, right? And the poster is trying to equate, okay, three drops or six drops is equal to this milligram concentration or that milligram concentration. You can't say for sure, right? Because I'm not sure if you guys know this, but if you were to just shake up a topical minoxidil bottle, and then look inside of it, you can see that there's little floaty stuff like white crystalline sort of floaty things. That's the minoxidil itself. Now, it's not a normalized or uniform process that every milliliter you get, you get exactly 50 milligrams or whatever of minoxidil, right? It could be the case that in one drop, you have a higher milligram concentration than another drop. So for all we know, this guy could be taking 20 milligrams a day, 10 milligrams a day, right? There's no standardized process here. So it's not wise to drink topical minoxidil. It's not wise at all. You'd be doing yourself a service if you were to get low dose oral minoxidil between 0.5 milligram up to 5 milligram doses from an actual doctor who can monitor any sort of cardiovascular side effects you may get. But when you're doing things like this, this is where you're asking for trouble. So again, I think this is where most of their hair gains came from. But certainly this is not wise. Lull Query also mentioned that they used derma rolling at a 1.5 millimeter length. And they derma rolled about once a week for the first four months. And, you know, that's pretty fair. But my concern here is that if while they were derma rolling, were they applying RU5841? Because this would definitely increase the systemic exposure of this experimental topical antiandrogen. And that's just not a good thing, right? If you were to have RU5841, in your bloodstream, it would go throughout your body, attach to androgen receptors inside your body, and potentially demasculinize your body and give you just a whole host of nasty symptoms regarding very, very poor libido, and also those nasty cardiovascular side effects that some users report, right? That tight chest pain sort of thing. We have reports of similar anti-androgens, at least when they were taken orally to treat conditions like prostate cancer. A particular drug, nilutamide, and bicalutamide have been noted to have liver and lung toxicity. So don't drink RU5841 and do not microneedle and expose RU5841 
to that open wound because, again, you could get that systemic absorption. Not a good idea. Do not do it. The poster also mentions how they're injecting peptides into their scalp. Look, I don't know what the hell's going on here, but let's just, you know, read this. So they're using a particular peptide called GHKCU, which is also called copper peptide GHKCU. And the poster uses two milligram per day during the second and third months of their treatment. They also use BPC-157, and I'm kind of familiar with this. This is known as body protection compound, and this comes from the stomach lining. So there's this specific protein that, in theory, has some sort of regenerative properties to it, right? But they report using 500 micrograms of BPC-157, and they inject this locally into the temples, and they did this primarily during the fifth month. Finally, they use TB500, also known as thymazine beta-4, and they've been using 5 milligrams every week starting at the fifth month of their treatment protocol. So let me start off by saying this, right? None of these peptides have been proven to prevent, slow down, stop, or even reverse hair loss. GHKCU is a copper peptide and has been noted to decrease blood pressure, so you gotta be careful with that, especially when you're this guy, right? When you're this guy who's drinking topical minoxidil, and that's just ridiculous, right? So don't play around with your blood pressure, making it too low that you could pass out and hurt yourself. Very bad. On the other hand, BPC-157 and TB-500 have some clinical data that shows that it could be used in cases for wound healing, like accelerating your wound healing and getting better wound healing, right? But nothing directly related to hair growth. And even on the wound healing claim of things, it mostly seems like it's just placebo. And they don't really note that much change in the tissue in humans. So it's not something that you should just be using willfully and thinking, oh, it's going to make the biggest improvement for me. It's just not proven at all. Again, I think it's reasonable to state that much of the gains here seem to be coming from this guy drinking topical minoxidil, which is a horrible decision to make. But we can tell because a lot of these peptide treatments that they just started doing came towards the end of this update. So they've been doing this for six months, and the peptide interventions came at around five months and four months or whatever, right? So they haven't been using this from the beginning. When looking at the comment section, I saw something that kind of made me say, like, what the hell is this guy talking about? So the poster talked to their doctor about how they wanted to use finasteride, but apparently their doctor told them that they can't use finasteride because they'll develop male breasts, or as they brazenly term it, titties or tits. So the doctor did not want to give them a prescription. But this is, again, bullshit. Because even if that's the case, you gotta look at what this guy is, right? This poster is out here buying experimental treatments with ease on the internet and using it on himself. So it's pretty funny and absurd that he, he magically stopped when the doctor said, hey, you can't use finasteride because you'll develop male breast or gynecomastia, so don't use finasteride, it's not safe. But then at the same time, he goes ahead and he buys RU5841 which he applies to his scalp after he microneedles, which increases the systemic exposure of a experimental topical anti-androgen. It seems ridiculous, it seems absurd, and it doesn't seem like he's thinking with his prefrontal cortex, not to sound rude, right? All in all, although these are very impressive results, I'm not going to take away from that, the stack here is kind of dangerous considering that he's using a high dose of topical RU5841, which is reported to have weird side effects and he probably sourced it from a shady gray market vendor. And this poster, Lol Query, or whatever his name is, is also drinking topical minoxidil. And guys, if you have been watching me, I have made memes and I've told people not to drink topical minoxidil. Do not do that. Don't do it. But now that I've covered my ass, let's just go on and read the script that I have typed out here. But he's possibly using topical minoxidil. He's ingesting this thing orally, maybe between 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams, just based on my calculations, right? This is pretty dangerous, and in all honesty, just don't do this. He might as well have gotten the oral minoxidil tablet from his doctor, right? But I think the fact that he's not addressing the underlying cause of androgenetic alopecia, which is DHT, the fact that he's not taking a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor to prevent testosterone from turning into DHT, this is a situation of fool's gold. Although he got progress from stupidly drinking topical minoxidil at possibly a very high 
milligram concentration, all of this progress is likely to go as DHT slowly but surely, maybe rapidly, consider the rate of his hair loss, right? Destroys his hair follicles, and yeah, he kind of just goes bald, and he could get nasty side effects from taking such a high concentration of oral topical minoxidil. So he needs to get on finasteride, but he probably isn't, so who cares? But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. It's kind of a quick, you know, reaction-esque kind of video, but if you got this far into the video, comment in the comment section below. Tasty minoxidil. Yes, tasty, like it tastes good, right? Tasty minoxidil. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.